In the previous video, we have started refactoring our world script to run asynchronously. Now, I want to just uh, reinforce that we have designed our code base with the functional programming or the programming where we are transforming the code that we pass to the method and returning some value in mind. So basically, we are calling different methods like this calculate world chunk data and all it does it calls the generate chunk data and this takes in the chunk data and returns the chunk data it doesn't modify anything outside of the context of this method now of course if we were to access the same chunk data from a different place for example from the main thread this would cause an issue so we need to be very careful about what type of methods do we call on a separate thread and this is the idea why I wanted to use the task class instead of the Unity job system, because with the task class, if you think up front and split your data from the code that renders things, you can easily refactor your code to the to using async and await keywords. With the job system, you have to think uh, about the refactoring the code to match the native array struct. Okay, so with this done as well, the important part is the uh, collections that we need to ensure that we use concurrent collections if we want to use the data across multiple multiple threads if we were to access any other the, so the standard collections dictionary for example we would end up having errors or having some data missing because this separate threads cannot really override the data in a single collection there needs to be some system that allows different threads to write to the data container and that's why we have those concurrent uh, collections okay we still need to keep the uh, for each loop for modifying the world generation data collection so the dictionaries inside the main loop but this doesn't take much computational power so this is okay now we have uh, this chunk data last step is to generate this mesh data and here is where i have asked you to try on your own to refactor it just as we did with the calculate world chunk data now of course the first thing we need to do is swap this dictionary for the concurrent dictionary okay so this will be now a concurrent dictionary because we are going to fill it in on a separate thread where we could possibly create uh, more threads to uh, approach this task and to make the operation run faster so here one issue that we are having is that inside this for each loop we are accessing the data from our world data dot chunk data dictionary so we want to access the data from the dictionary that exists on the main thread and that's something that i do not want to uh, have i want to have this data passed into the task so that we are safe to assume that this exists inside the task we are not going to rely on the, the dictionary to be able to access this data let's create a list and we are going to create a list of chunk data and as you recall our chunk data has the world reference position so indeed we do not have to pass the position here we can have the chunk data and the chunk data has its own position so we can assign it to the mesh data dictionary add position and the mesh data because our chunk data can provide this position so let's create this and we are going to call it maybe data to process or to render equals and how do we get the concrete chunk data from our dictionary so in this case we can again use the link library so we're going to call world data dot and we have this chunk data dictionary and we're going to call dot where right click on this and say quick actions using system.link which will be uh, added at the top okay so we want to select the key value pair so we have key value pair such as so lambda expression so equals and greater sign and we want to only select those uh, if the uh, key uh, if actually if our world chunk uh, creation uh, generation data so let's copy this where below so we are going to check if our world generation data the chunk positions to create contains and we are going to pass our key value per dot key so now we have those uh, values 
which are uh, present inside our world generation data and those uh, we are returning the key value pair so again we have the uh, key is the vector 3 int and the pair is chunk data and we want to only select the chunk data so we can add select and we are going to get the key value pair such as so again lambda expression so great uh, equals and greater sign and we're going to uh, select our key uh, value pair dot value and we are going to at the end call to list so basically what we did we, is we have selected only the key value pairs that are on our list of our chunk positions to create then we are going to select only the values so only the chunk data and we are going to return the chunk data to a list what we are going to do is we are going to pass this list to a newly created method so let me paste our new method so we are going to fill in our mesh data dictionary by using await create mesh data async and we are going to pass the data to render which contains our chunk data points let's right click on this method quick actions and generate it okay and we can cut out this for each loop and as you might recall we are going to wait for the await uh, method uh, after the await to finish after the, before we call the start coroutine so this will be correct behavior and let's slide down to find our coroutine here it is and we are going to pass here concurrent dictionary dictionary great so now this coroutine will work correctly all we need to do is to fill this create mesh data async so what we are going to do here is exactly uh, what we did below in our calculate world chunk data we are going to add here a since we have copied the code let's create return and we are going to call task dot run and we are going to pass here another lambda expression so we are going to pass empty parameter so empty parenthesis lambda expression so equals and greater sign and here we are going to create those parentheses for the anonymous method and we are going to paste here our for each loop now of course we will need to have the dictionary so let's copy the concurrent dictionary definition from the return type let's call it data or dictionary equals new dictionary let's use autocomplete to complete this and of course our task needs to return the dictionary so at the end we are going to return our dictionary okay so our task now is to loop for each data chunk so let's call it uh, chunk data data in our data to render okay so now we do not have to access this chunk data because we have it here next we need to call this chunk dot get mesh uh, get chunk mesh data on our static class chunk and again since we have used the static classes we are sure that this cannot modify anything in uh, in uh, this scope we need to pass here the data and we need to return the data so this is one way to ensure that we are not modifying anything outside of this method be uh, beside this what we pass it as parameters as arguments and at the end we had this mesh data dictionary add now we are going to call this dictionary and we are going to need to call on it try add and we are going to pass here our data dot world position as the uh, key so the vector 3 int it will be taken from the chunk data from the data okay and that's it so now all we need to do is start this coroutine and create our chunks in our coroutine but overall we haven't made anything faster actually we have only unblocked the main thread and before we can go back to unity we are actually calling this go uh, find all references we are actually calling this method from our load additional chunk request method and this is underlined with a green squiggly line because this call is not awaited execution of this current method continues before the call is complete so basically we are going to call all new chunks generated before we generate the chunks so let's call our, our load additional chunk request as the async method and we are going to make it await our generate world so that we are not going to call this event until we are done so actually we haven't really generated all the chunks but this is only starting the game manager to start searching if our player has uh, moved away uh, enough so that we need to load more chunks 
Now, of course, this system is a bit fragile because we need to take into account what happens if the player is moving very fast. But for now, let's save it and let's go back to Unity to test if the performance has been improved or not. Okay, so let's press play. And right now, our system is not faster. Now, I have increased the size of the drawing range to 8. But if you have a, a bit slower machine, you can decrease it. But basically, what we can do now is move around our map. And as you can see, there are no significant frame drops. Now, there is some uh, frame rate hit when we are calculating those different things and generating our world. But basically, what we can do is fly around and we will be loading more chunks as we fly around. And this will all work while we are moving around our world and there is nothing uh, specific happening to. Uh, distract us from affecting the world around us so this is the improvement that we have waited for because now we can add whatever we want into our game and uh, it will not work significantly faster than on the main thread but it will not block it and uh, this is why i have chosen to use the task library because if we have split the code the data generation code from the rendering part it is much easier to use the task library compared to the job system where we would have refact to refactor all the code to use the native array and figure out how we can pass the objects, for example, and not the structs, because I, as I believe you cannot really pass the objects to a native array. So this is why I prefer the task library. And besides, you can use it to write software or whatever you need to write in C Sharp. And the job system only works in Unity. Okay, great. Now, of course, we can talk a bit more about multi-threading and make our code uh, or our loading a bit faster compared to what we have by implementing multiple threads to generate different parts of our data but basically this is a great improvement and now this is starting to be a playable game now of course this has no uh, not a lot of features but we are now loading the chunks and of course we can simulate our infinite world okay great if you are enjoying this tutorial please consider supporting me through Patreon. You can, of course, check out my video courses about making 2D games. I hope you will enjoy them as well. And of course, leave a like, leave a comment. Uh, those helps me a lot as well. In the next video, I think that we are going to go back to procedural generation and start working on the trees and the biomes. And later on, we can talk more about uh, making it a bit more efficient about implementing simplex noise compared to the parallel noise, but it's all uh, to come. For now, we have done a great job with making this much more playable, and we can expand on the procedural generation algorithm. Okay, see you in the next video.